Durncliffe Family Church, a community where love is visible and hope experienced. I appreciate being part of this community. It's a small, intimate community. It's authentic. And my role here at the congregation is for the music ministry. And uh, we keep it also acoustic, uh, going along with that a simple, authentic, intimate experience. In this um, family church, I've experienced love through the feeling scheme where I'm involved. We have experienced real love. We have four services at Durinkler Family Church, three Afrikaans and one English. Uh, the Afrikaans services we have two at nine o'clock. The first one is in the church building at nine with more traditional um, culture. At nine o'clock we also have a family friendly Afrikaans service in the hall. Then at 6.30 in the evening we have a more contemporary evening type of service and you're welcome to join any of them. But then we also have an English service at 10.30 in the morning in the church building. We're a very diverse group, different languages, different nationalities, different cultures. And within this diversity we connect with each other and with God. The, the thing I, I like most about Dorenclough Family Church is the humility of our, our congregation and I have the great opportunity of teaching the young children. With missionaries in the four corners of the earth in Mozambique, Namibia, Swaziland and USA. Making sure that love is visible and hope is experienced. I love being a part of a church family where we can get together and connect on Tuesday evenings and learn about the Word of God. Durnkler Family Church um, is my me time with God. Um, besides for the daily praying that I do on my own. It really gives me an opportunity or um, a community where I get to learn about God, learn about the Bible, learn about what the messages really are in the Bible. I'm also involved with the Connect group on a Tuesday night. The Connect group is very open and all-encompassing and challenging because all our opinions are different. So, But we get an, a platform to really discuss it and to have an open discussion about it. If you would like more information, please visit our website at dkfk.coza and make your language selection there. So join us on Sunday, where you'll be welcome to a community. Where love is feasible. And hope experienced. We hope to see you soon. Good morning, community. Welcome to the English service of Durenkloof Family Church. My name is Anandi Hreling and welcome in my living room. And thanks for welcoming me and yours. Whether you're tuning in via the video or the audio, we are extremely happy to know that you are still tuning in through all of the lockdown. And if you have been uh, a visitor for a while, or maybe if you have tuned in as a member during this time, please let us know. We'll add you to the WhatsApp group. There's also a button in our family news um, that we've been sending out that you can just join the group on your own, the broadcast group, or you can just email us or send us a WhatsApp. I want to ask you to take a moment of silence with me. We do this every week. Maybe you feel like, oh, this again. But there's a reason why we do it. You and I, we need to become aware that we are not just tuning in here to get something, um, but we are tuning in here because God invited you. He's the one that's called you to gather here today with us. So when we take a moment of silence, we become aware and we are reminded that God is with us. and God is speaking to us together this morning. And while you take a moment of silence, please light the candle there at your home and take turns to light the candle. Let's take that moment. Be greeted this morning. In the name of God the Father, the Parent, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, and the Holy Spirit, who lives within each and every one of us. Amen. There where we are, let's turn to our household. Let's greet each other with the words, peace be with you. You can shake each other's hands, look each other in the eye. 
You can also type it here in the live chat if you're joining us now with the premiere of the video. Peace be with you. Let's listen to one of the songs of our band and thank you Almo and the team for putting this together and uh, feel welcome to sing with or if you just want to listen to the words do that um, attentively. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole or if you're new and tuning in we don't send out separate Sunday school material at the moment we want to um, emphasize that faith at home within the households and the families are important to us and we want you to focus on that and to get within this rhythm uh, we say we always say this in the church building as well and I want to say it now as well that the faith formation of your children um, you as parents are the most important person in their life 
to help with that formation. And that's why during every service we try and give you uh, something to talk about, maybe even something to do uh, that will help you to facilitate this type of formation in faith. Another thing that's important is the rhythm of attending and tuning into the services. So gather your children. It's a not a long service. Let them sit together and, um, and let's stay in this rhythm because uh, hopefully it won't be too long before we can gather again in the church building. But the faith at home for this week. Uh, we're going to read and, and listen to the message of Joseph and his brothers. And uh, you'll hear in this text that these siblings, um, well, mostly Joseph and his brothers don't get along very well. And um, they do something to him that's just terrible. And uh, I want to ask you as a family, um, what do you think about a family like this, like Joseph's, that is struggling with relationships, struggling to get along, uh, they actually even sell their brother, don't do this. <laughs> um, but do you think that God can still use a family like this? Do you think God still wants to use a family like this? And maybe the question should be, how can God still use a family that is just having so much and so many feuds with each other? And to end off your faith at home, take a piece of paper and a pen. And as a family, write together the dream or the dreams that you have for your family. You can maybe even take it a step further and ask, what dreams do you think God has for your family? You're welcome to do it either after the sermon or you're welcome to pause the video or the audio and to do that as a family now. If you're tuning in on your own or just as a group of adults, try and have the discussion. See where it takes you. Take a piece of pen, take a piece of paper and a pen and um, yeah, try and see what, what, what you also think your dream is for a family. Our scripture reading today is from Genesis and I'll be doing the reading today. I remind you that if you are willing to do the scripture reading or the announcements, please give me a call or a WhatsApp. Love to include you in the services. But our scripture reading today is from Genesis 37. We're going to read a few verses, skip a few and then read the rest. But we're going to start with Genesis 37 verse 1. So you can open up your Bibles with you and um, yeah, let's, let's read it together. And before we do that, let's take a moment of silence. I want to ask you to... In one sentence, try and, and, and share with God what is your biggest need at this moment in your life? Or what do you experience at the moment in your life? Just one sentence. You don't even have to say it out loud. And then I'll do a prayer. Lord, thank you for gathering us today in different spaces, in different homes, but together in your name, Jesus Christ. I want to pray that you will speak to us today, Holy Spirit, that you will open up our hearts and our ears and our minds and, and that we will be attentive and also um, present in this moment. Lord, we, we pray and ask your forgiveness for maybe the way that we've behaved or misbehaved within the last few months. Where we've been selfish, maybe. Where we've forgotten about, well, your promises and your calling in our lives. We're sorry for the places where we've missed and the moments where we've missed that we could have made a difference or, or be a blessing to other people. We thank you that when we come to you that you forgive us. And that you love us regardless of where we've been or what we've done. And we thank you for your grace. Help us this week. To live from our identity and to be a blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Genesis 37, verse 1. Joseph drew, Joseph's dreams. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilah and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report on them. Now Israel, remember Jacob's name changed, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had born to him in his old age and he made a richly ornamented robe for Joseph. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. Let's just pause there for a moment. So we had this whole series on Jacob, um, from Jacob to Israel, and his name changed, and he was wrestling with God, and then his name changed. And we talked about how he um, negotiated the birthright with his brother. He stole the blessing from his brother. Uh, his father-in-law deceived him as well. He worked seven years for the woman he was in love with uh, to find out that he married her older sister. Then he worked another seven years for her. And this is Joseph's mom, the beloved wife for whom, Joseph, for whom Jacob worked 14 years. Now, as many of the other mothers that we have come to know in Genesis, she was to be known and understood as barren. And then when she did conceive a child, the first one was Joseph. And so he was the beloved son of Jacob. Uh, a son from, from the wife whom he loved, from his beloved wife. And Jacob, whether this was wise or not, made no secret of this. Everyone, all of the brothers knew, all ten older brothers knew that their father loved Joseph more. Now, I don't think this is very wise and parents don't do this. Uh, learn from Jacob's mistakes. But it's as if Jacob doesn't even learn from his own um family and father and mother's mistakes and how they also had favorites and and the whole story and what happened there and he and he gives joseph a robe an ornamented robe the, the only other place as far as i know that this specific hebrew word for robe is used for a robe of one of the king's children, I think it was, for a princess. So this is kind of, oh, it's really huge. You've seen some of the movies. Um, it, it was a big thing and it said something of his love to his son um, and also the place in, in his heart for his son. Now, I think that enough would have been a big of a threat for his brothers. But then from verse 5, which I'm not going to read, but... Please do read it in your own time. Joseph has two dreams. And the, and the core, the gist of the dreams is that his brothers, and then the second dream, his mom and dad also, would bow down to him. Or interpret it, but would bow down to him. And his brothers were just livid about this. This little younger brother of them, not just the dad's favorite, but now he comes and he's arrogantly proclaiming these dreams, dreams which would have been understood as something saying of the future, and he arrogantly just tells it to them. And his father also kind of rebukes him for it, but yes, he's this little ang arrogant younger brother. Duh! Not only that, he's a tattletale. He splits his brother's many times to go to their father and tell their father what they're busy with, what they're up to, etc. And then the next part of the story comes that we're going to read. Jacob sends Joseph to where his brothers is. Some people say to kind of peer again from the, <laughs> um, the tattletale, what the brothers are up to. Other people say maybe in the translation we read something of shalom, peace. Maybe he wanted to send him to go and make peace. Whatever the reason, I personally don't think Jacob was very um, 
wise again about this. He must have known how the brothers felt about him. He must have known that they did not appreciate him even being near them. But he sends Joseph. And we read from verse 12. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are gazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's, let's kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns and, and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben, the eldest, heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern, like a pit, right, here in the desert. But don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe. Can you believe that he went with this robe that caused a lot of, you know, um, uh, feelings of his brothers? He went with this. I mean, really, Joseph. So the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty and there was no water in it. So luckily we knew he can't drown, but he also doesn't have water to drink. As they sat down to eat their meal, I mean, just throwing their brother in a pit, let's go and have lunch, all right? They looked up and they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. The camels were loaded with spices and balm and myrrh, and they were on their way uh, to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His, his brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? And then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on um, sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning will I go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. I mean, if we thought Jacob and his brother Esau had problems, we've not <laughs> seen or heard anything yet. Nine brothers want to kill another brother. Is it envy? Is, the, is it that they're just tired of his arrogance? Are they afraid that because their father might love him more or because he's the firstborn from the beloved wife that he's a threat to them? I'm not sure, but they considered murder. And then they throw him in the pit, have their lunch, don't know what to do. And then they sell him as a slave. 
How could you do that to a sibling? What rage, envy, whatever emotion you want to fill into this gap must you have to do that? Maybe they thought death is too, too easy for him. Maybe he should suffer. Let him go as a slave. Oh, let's make money out of this. What is it as the text says that they didn't want blood on their hands? But then they do go to the father and then they, they, they hurt a father, their father, in a way that he mourns for his son. I read somewhere this week that someone said they didn't see Joseph as a brother or a human anymore, but as a thing, a thing to be sold. I wonder, I wonder what happens when we also don't see other people, whether it's your siblings or family, no matter how dysfunctional you think you are or whatever, or anyone else in your life. But when we don't start seeing each other anymore, I mean really see each other as a person, as someone created in the image of God, I wonder if we've also done things to other people. Things that are maybe too, ter too terrible to mention. When we see someone else as a thing. When we are selfish. But then, coming back to Joseph. He's in this pit. The text does not say how he felt. The text does not tell us if Joseph felt that God had forsaken him. It kind of leaves it up to us to fill in the gaps. Many preachers jump very quickly to the next chapters. And you and I, we know what happens in the next chapters. Don't go there yet. We'll do that next week. Just sit with Joseph for a while in the pit. Did he maybe realize that he had been too arrogant? That he maybe had pushed his brothers just a bit too far? Did he maybe wonder what would become of God's promises and covenant? Did he maybe cry? I wonder, and this is, this is to me, I wonder how he felt when they lifted him up. Like, oh, they've come to their senses. Yay. Sorry, I won't wear any robe like this again. I won't, like, tell you my dreams any game anymore. I won't rub it in your face. The dad loves me more. I wonder if he... Oh, it's just coming up for, and then it wasn't that. They sold him then. You see, people tell Joseph's um, story as a, as a down, up, down, up situation. He, um, the beloved son, <laughs> goes down into the pit. Then they lift him up. Then they sell him as a slave. And then we'll talk about the next parts of the story. But he's got this roller coaster thing going on. And, um, I wonder how he felt when he came up and he thought it was going to be okay and then it was even much worse. Maybe you felt that way in your life before. Like you just feel like you're coming up for air and then the wave hits again. Maybe you've experienced it during this time in the corona time. Just when you think your business is going to be okay again, there's another thing that you, you can't do or it's not possible. Just when you think that you might get an income again. Just when you think that you can um, go back to school again. And then ups and downs. Roller coaster rides. What I can tell you this morning is that you are not the only one. I know there are many people experiencing that at the moment. But we also read about real people, um, real stories in the Bible who also experienced that. And what we do know is that God, whether Joseph experienced it or not, but that God was with Joseph in all the ups and the downs. So if you can... Remember this this week, whatever your ups and downs are, or how you're experiencing them, or how long you are where you are, um, God is 
with you. And that God also calls us to see each other, not as things, but as people. So may you and I in our interaction this week really try and see each other. And whenever you are in an up and down, may you know that God is also with you. I invite you to tune into next week's sermon where we will talk about the ups and downs a bit more and what God did with the ups and downs. But for this week, know that it's okay if you're experiencing a down. Read the story of Joseph again. Maybe try and find comfort or resonation in that. I'm not going to pray. I'm going to ask you to have a moment of silence. Whatever you want to place at God's feet, say that, share that. Amen. Our announcements for this week, I'm also doing them. So again, if you want to help me with it, send me a WhatsApp. Love your help. Um, we don't have many announcements this week. So um, one, thank you for all your support with the roadhouses that we've had. Chris and his team are doing amazing and wonderful work. Please keep on supporting them. So uh, we'll send you WhatsApps on the group to tell you what will be on the menu, which Friday. And then please don't make food at home. Support us. Um, all of this uh, funds go towards our fate um, bazaar uh, budget. So we can't have a traditional fate this year. So we need to do other ways. And um, yeah, so that's one of them. Then also in October, there will be a cake sale. So please bake something and bring it to church, donate it. And then um, the next day, come and buy something <laughs> with a drive through kind of baking cake sale. We'll also post some information on that. And invite your friends and family to also come and buy something wonderfully baked. Uh, we've got amazing bakers in our congregation. And then there will also be a Christmas market in November. So we'll also send you details there and how you can maybe make something or contribute something. And all of this will go towards our fate fund. Then thank you for all your contributions, all of the offerings that you've continually and um, throughout all of this time contributed. We thank you. Thank you that we can continue with the work um, at church and the details are on the screen and you can just use the reference offerings. We will let you know we are continually assessing um, the situation. Um, and we do want to get back to having church services in the building. We really do. But we want to do that in a discerning way. So within the next few weeks, we will again communicate to you uh, where we are within this process. And um, we will definitely communicate a date, etc. when we would um, gather again in the church building. If... Um, if you need prayers during this time, please let us know. Uh, if you're going during a tough situation, let us know. If you want to um, let us know if something wonderful has also happened, please let us know. And um, yeah, there is no Zoom conversation today. We will um, have a Zoom conversation after the worship service again from next um, Sunday. And then uh, the Zoom Connect groups on Tuesday. We're doing Ruth 2. So join us. And um, yeah, it's a very informal, lacquered conversation. No more than 40 minutes. And um, yeah, you can also join it for just one book or for a uh, long term. We hope you have a wonderful week. Our community's identity, vision, dream is that we are and maybe the children can do this with me at home with hand movements if you want to we are a community where love is visible and hope experienced you're welcome to listen to the song after the blessing sing it with or just attentively um, being present listen to the song receive the blessing of the lord the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Know that God is with you in the roller coasters of life. Even if you don't feel like it, God is with us. 
and you are being sent today to see people. Amen. Shine upon you 